had a tent city. That was a tent that was put up in a big spacious grounds that was given to the city by RTD uh, for families. Who That's were a transportation system in Los yes, Angeles, right? Yes, okay. for families who were homeless. And so these little children in Soto School wanted to do something for them, and we decided that we would bring food from home, and we would uh, get a bus, a councilman gave us a bus, and we would visit the families out in Tent City. There was a lot of bureaucracy that went on out there because the food had to be inspected, etc. And they were afraid that the children, you know, would be molested walking through the, the Tent City. However, they sent us a guard to take us through the Tent City and went through it. And the little children happened to turn around and look and saw babies out there. And they said, why are the babies out there? They haven't done anything. And I said, no. But they're out there with their parents. And their parents are homeless. And they said, but why are the babies there? Nobody wants the babies? I said, the babies belong to the babies. So we got on the bus, and one little boy in the back, who was supposed to be one of the worst little boys in the school, said, I'm going home and write to my mom and daddy and thank them for getting their act together, okay? So the guys were standing in front of the bus, and this is what he said to them. He said, children, let me tell you something. When I came down to Los Angeles, my daddy took me down on 5th Street and showed it to me and said, Son, never let me get you down here on 5th Street among the homeless. He said, But I was a hard-headed little boy. He said, And before I knew it, I was on 5th Street among the homeless with no place to go, no place to stay. He said, But let me tell you something. He said, I got down on my knees in the middle of the road and I looked up to heaven and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, he said, I will never, ever be disobedient again. He said, Please. Please help me, Jesus. He said, I want you to know that the Lord stood me up on my feet and turned me around 180 degrees. He said, now I am your guide. I work here from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the evening. There's my new car sitting over there on the side of the road. And I go home to my wife and my children. And I put my foot up to look at my television until my dinner is ready. He said, that's what the Lord got me. And I said, yes, because you reached up and got it. And then I looked at the little children and said, Any wino who's laying down in the street can reach up and catch that sanctified grace. If it wasn't for the grace. Of it wasn't for the Lord. Where would I, where would I be? So that reaching up is called what? Reaching up is called, it's called, what is it called? It's a, it's a petition. For, for it's prayer. And that's it's, it's a petition. It's prayer. That means anyone can reach up and oh, say, Oh, Lord, yes. If you are made in the image of God, you are equal to each other in this sight. That means all benefits and the blessings that the Lord God Almighty has for you, He has for me, and He has for everybody else that is on this earth. He knows our what we're saying here this is powerful stuff and I don't think it's taught in school there's God up there asking and he'll give it to you or he'll give you something why aren't we teaching that if it is his will but you might ask him for something that is not in his will and you wonder why God does not answer your prayer because it's not for you okay? and then the devil has a little thing to do with that too you might pray for a new car and here comes a new Volkswagen okay you says oh the Lord sent me this new Volkswagen but the Lord didn't really send that Volkswagen the devil sent that Volkswagen along because here comes your son from school driving the Cadillac I'm 18, a 1990 Cadillac and says mom I drove this all the way from Chicago, just and you say, that's okay. So, with you have to discern discerning the spirit, and discernment, difference. discernment of the spirit is a determining of God's will. Is that correct? That's correct. And the determining of God's will then is a connecting of our free will to God's will. Okay. Which then follows what Father Robinson said that he already knows what you need. Anyhow. Because we have with humility mm -hmm. 
opened our hearts and, our mouths. and said, Lord, help me. Mm-hmm. And that's what gets the blessings to flow. All right, that's what gets the graces. To All right, sir. So why aren't we telling people this? Well, because you see, if you want to know why we aren't telling people this as Catholics, it's a long story. Catholics are not used to going out and proclaiming that Jesus is God. Catholics are not used to going out and evangelizing. And it, no, they are now at the point where they realize the importance of evangelization and they are talking about it. I'm not saying doing it, brother. I'm saying they are talking about it and, this, and how to go about it. And this is why our Protestant brothers and sisters have been going out leading many of the Catholic away, away from the church. When we still have all of this in the church and anyway. The church. And also, too, in the same connection, this is what Vatican II has brought us to and also challenge us to get in touch better with our scripture, to get in touch better with our doctrine to get in touch better to what we are called to, and this is the movement now we speak of evangelization, the call for evangelization, and also to be able to stand up, to reach out, and to uh, share, share in a very special way the good news, and share it in the way that we have not done in the past. Rather than hard and keeping it to ourselves, we are called and we want to reach out and to carry on this mission of Christ through the cross of evangelization, also to proclaiming it and proclaiming the good news. And saying to them also, too, that you have a place in this kingdom, in this earthly kingdom, which is stepping and stepping stone, that spiritual kingdom for which we have been created, for which we have been called, for which we have been called by our baptism, but also to and to the, the gifts of grace that we have spoken about, the actual or sanctifying grace, is to be able to grow in that so that uh, uh, we see these as gifts and also the need to share these gifts, to share the good news, and to say to all of our brothers and sisters, you are special. God calls you in a very special way. You are special in His eyes. He has blessed you in many ways. And you show, you respond to that blessing by, uh, by reaching out to Him through prayer, through our brothers and sisters who are there because Jesus reminds us that whatsoever you do to one of these the least of my brethren if you see someone hungry if you see someone naked if you see someone homeless and someone hungry or in need or in prison and you visit them what he has taught us was saying to us if that is within our hearts and within our minds, our entire being, this is what we seek to do. And when you reach out to your brother and sister, as long as you do it to one of these, the least of my brethren, you are doing it to me. You are being Christ-like. You are being that Christian. You are being that Christ-bearer. And you are sharing the gifts that are there. And if Christ is within you, then you recognize that love that is there, the love of the Father, which we perceive and we see and experience through Christ, this is the love of the Father that we can really share with our brothers and our sisters. And this is how we become one with Christ. Now we continue to be one with Him and continue to grow in that love, that understanding, and that oneness with Christ. This sharing then is a perpetuation of what Jesus, the Master, the Christ, did on earth. This sharing is a following the way. Following the way. And in that sense, when we understand when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yes, we become that way. We share that truth. We proclaim that truth in our lives. And also we become that light to the world. We become that light to our brothers and sisters. And that uh, in what we share and how we reach out to them, we show that goodness, that love of Christ in our hearts and we become, we become that way that truth and that life. and whatsoever we do to the least the homeless the imprisoned as you said the sick whatsoever we do to the least of them we have done it unto Christ yes. Jesus reminds us that the poor you will always have with you 
there's always someone out there indeed uh, calling you, beckoning you to reach out to them as Jesus has reached out, as, as he has uh, uh, touched uh, so many lives in so many ways, even though he touched them even without knowing it. So too, we touch lives. We touch individuals. We are Christ to them, and sometimes we're not aware of it. But that genuine love of Christ within our hearts, that is what we are. We are permeated by that. We're reaching out and we are sharing. Let me do some word association. Mercy, what is it? Compassion and love. What kind of love? The same love the same as... Love, the same love. What is compassion? What is compassion? Compassion is the ability to empathize. To recognize and to see a need. How oh, that person uh, really has reached such a low ebb in their life and they've really lost touch with life. But God has placed us in that position. We see to reach out to them and to be that of Christ to them and to lift them up by prayer, by outreach, and just by being present there to say to them, you are important. By the grace of God, you can overcome this. By the grace of God, the strength he has given me will help you. I will assist you. I will walk I will walk that extra mile with you, whatever is needed. I recognize you are in need. And in this Christ-like love, I reach out to you. I reach out to you in compassion. I reach out to you who, uh, who is really in need, so that as I assist you, and from this experience, you will also be able to recognize those who are in need in a similar manner. Continue that beautiful circle that whoever is in need, as long as you do it to one of these least of my brethren, you do it to me. That's dangerous. What you have just said is mercy is something we give others. And if mercy is something, it's something that we recognize the need of others. And by the grace that has been given to us, we reach out to me, me, me to them. And we show understanding. Uh, that's what I mean, at least by the whole aspect of mercy, not looking down upon them. But also, you are in need, my brother or my sister. And because you are, in a Christ-like manner, I reach out to you. And I want to share the best that I have with you so that you, too, can be lifted. But the reason why I'm saying it's dangerous, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. you're saying mercy is our sharing, our recognizing of that need, our being Christ-like to someone in need, correct? Now, in other words, uh, take a step further. In other words, that love of Christ is in me helps me to see that need. That's something that is of me, something that has been given to me, and I am sharing. One of the gifts. One of the gifts. Now, if mercy is our sharing, or our supposed sharing, and our understanding that someone needs something, then what I hear you saying, if there has been a proposition of the gifts, whatsoever you use to my brethren, you've you done unto me, right. if we do not have mercy on others, then it would seem to me that we are not able to approach the Master and ask for mercy. And for that reason, you are so right. For that reason, it behooves me so right. to reach out to that brother or sister. Woe be me if I do not reach out to that brother or sister. Those were the woes. Because See, there, there's parallelism between what you just said. There's parallelism. That if I'm not able to see the need of my brother or my sister, that I am not going to do anything about it. And if I don't do anything about it, then Christ says, when did you see me? And I'm the one who says, Lord, I didn't see you. When did I see you home? When did I see you thirsty? When did I see you in prison? And I really didn't see you because I didn't see the need of my brother or my sister who was right here walking the spiritual journey. So there's a scriptural caveat, if I remember correctly. It get thee away from me, ye accursed. If you did not see our Lord hungry, our Lord thirsty, our Lord naked, our Lord in prison, you saw, but you refused to see. There is a caveat or there's a warning there that then justice is a component of this law of mercy that always, our Lord always, has placed here on this earth. Always. When we come to the Lord, when we come to that judgment seat, that is the important thing. When you saw your brother in need, you show mercy to him. You see, that's the caveat. Well, you're speaking of and that's the growth process was important that we recognize this. And not only just for some who want to do it for all.